Hi everybody, well here we are at the end of day two at an amazing venture capital conference here at Intertrade Ireland live from Croke Park and it was just fantastic I have to say. Martin McVicker started off talking about the adversity that can come with challenge and of course he gave the example of what happened during the pandemic but pointed out about all of the opportunity that we can take uh, when we choose to look at an opportunity like that and just think what can we do in the face of that adversity. Then David Bowles had a conversation all around seed tech and I have uh, tagged everybody in the post and they were particularly talking about product market fit that came up so, so, so often and also the changing nature of a CEO when you're going through and then after the fundraising process. And also one person also mentioned about how important it is for parent founders to be supported in their own specific way, given the extra challenges and, of course, opportunities that comes with with that. And also they were just talking about that really and truly what every founder should be looking for is repeatable, scalable business from customers who are clearly definable so that you can indeed have that product market fit. Then we had, uh, I had a fireside chat then with Peter Foley and Alan Merriman all around the Let's Get Checked story. Just such a fantastic interview, really and truly. They they were just, they gave so many insights about, um, Peter in particular spoke about, you know, the journey of getting now to where Let's Get Checked is indeed a unicorn. It's valued at over a billion. But as he said, getting funding is not a milestone of success. Executing upon it is what matters. And also as well, Alan did something very smart today. He brought in the notes that he had from the initial pitch because he said that it's so important to not not um, forget what you actually thought at the time. And he spoke about the importance of that investor relationship and how as a company goes on to have further rounds, how the investor needs to be there at the table to help the company to grow bigger and bigger. After that, then we had uh, Dr. Nora Caldi, again, superb story. And she particularly spoke about um, how to use biotechnology in peptides, which is disease beating molecules in food. And then she was talking about the importance of making sure that you keep networking with investors all the time even when you don't need investment because you never know when you will. And also, of course, when you do get visibility of when you will need it, at least then the relationship building has been done along the way. Then Mary McKenna had a conversation all around agility and growth with some fantastic uh, panelists as well. They spoke about the requirement of really needing to know about your vision, like what exactly are you looking for and having a mission in order to get you there. They spoke about the importance of having a good financial model to bring you there. And also they spoke about what's really good about the Irish ecosystem and what needs to be improved, particularly what they said was good. is the kindness of strangers um, is the network that's available within the Irish ecosystem. But then they also spoke about, you know, having more belief, having more, um, having more ambition and also being willing to ask for help earlier and also of course being willing to give back as well so there was a range of different things there but they said Irish companies truly have the capability of being world class and they also brought up the tax structures in Ireland as well um, being a challenge particularly in comparison to other jurisdictions now then I interviewed uh, Ken Cahill from Silver Cloud uh, another phenomenal story He's spoken an awful lot about, you know, basically being better than everybody else in various different ways. That comes from a competitive um, USP and your positioning, but also being the one who will keep going and having the grit and having the resilience to go so that you can ultimately earn your own look. Um, he also talked about, you know, the importance of, of, the, of having a spouse who understands you and who's going to go the distance with you. And he just spoke about the fact, of course, is that you as an individual, it's not just you that's involved in the business. The people around you, your family as well, are also going to be in that. And he, he spoke about, you know, having the having the honest conversations around that as well. And he also uh, spoke about, you know, having the um, mutual trust with your investor before they become an investor. So at term sheet level and everything else and just building that trust on both sides, because, of course, there is a big agreement to be had there. Uh, he also spoke about as well that you change your stakeholders when you get acquired and that at the end of the day, as an individual, you were never the boss or the total owner of the whole company anyway. And that you just have to understand like your community and your stakeholders and your shareholders and your customers, they now just transfer into a bigger version of all of the above. Absolutely amazing story as well. Clear vision and built a business that truly had a very global vision in mind from the very beginning and is just continuing on to do that. Then we had Anya Den and she um, she sold 
or she was co-founder of a business that did a, an 84 million acquisition was was acquired for 84 million at the end of 15 years in eight weeks and she attributes the speed to the processes and procedures that they had she spoke an awful lot around the cadence and the rigor and the discipline that were built into their sales systems from the very beginning and um, she also said success of your business is tied into the strength of your relationships and she said executing upon uh, upon your decisions and keeping your promises that was one thing that she said define the culture of the business she said is so important um she also said as well is that you can really learn an awful lot about the next steps of your journey from your customers just looking at what else your customers are doing tangential to what you might be delivering for them and listening to them having very good conversations with them building long lasting relationships with them is that they can really hold the um the signposts i suppose to what you might need to do next now Moving on from there, uh, I'm also now going to tell you about my next scaling panel. And uh, I'm just going to share with you the, the stories of the people that I had the, um, the pure benefit or the privilege to interview. So we start off with Aidan Corbett. Uh, so Aidan Corbett is from Wayflower. And that business has been through phenomenal growth, reaching unicorn status of 1.6 billion in just 20 months. And the business is planning to lend a billion dollars of credit by the end of the year, set to launch three new products in 2022. And also particularly for e-commerce founders struggling with their supply chain. And what he spoke about doing is that or just understanding, just really and truly understanding your customer really, really, really well. I spoke a lot about doing business in the US as well. And uh, particularly, he said, culturally, they make decisions faster. And he spoke about really understanding the problem that your customers have that's keeping them up at night and stepping in there. Then Brendan Naud from LearnUpon, um, 1,300 customers, 12 million people using the platform, 270 staff, five to 10 new hires joining every uh, two weeks and building their re annual revenues by more than 50% year over year for the past 12 quarters. Um, among many things, he spoke about the content man marketing strategy and the consistency and regularity of high value content and the importance of that over time. Niall Toomey then from Fenergo, um, that business, a revenue of $107 million, company is now valued at $1.16 billion, another unicorn. Client book of 100 of the largest banks in the world, 850 staff and recruiting another, at the, uh, another 100 at the moment. He spoke about the power of relationships and he said that, you know, he spoke about the fact that mentors went on to invest in the business, customers went on to invest in the business. Again, taking care of your relationships and making sure that you don't confuse those simply for, for context. And he just said about sometimes everything can be right except time. He said, like, you give the right product, the right target, you could have the right, everything could be right except the time. And you never know when that time could subsequently be right. So developing your relationships there are very important. We had Rory O'Connor then from Scurry and he was talking about um, taking a big pivotal decision to go from business to business to, sorry, business to consumer to business to business. And he said what they did in making that change was they thought about what have we got and what can we go for? And then they said, what could the business model canvas subsequently lead to? What areas could they really back? They, after they took, they went from seven ideas down to three ideas, did a lot of market research and then backed one. And that has been uh, really, really successful. They've handled goods of 10.5 billion and the equivalent of the cumulative value of goods handled between 2016 and 2020 is what they did last year. They're preparing to triple their workforce to 120 over the next two years. And uh, they raised the most recent round uh, of funding as well, which they said was pretty straightforward based on the success of what they had done thus far. Then I had Kino Modig uh, then, and he said that their business was born, um, they're born in the future, but reared in Tremor. Nearform is the company, of course, behind the COVID uh, tracing app in Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland, Scotland, a variety as well of the US states, Gibraltar, etc. And he said um, Nearform has over 200 staff with presence in 25 countries and um, they're very, very, very conscious of open source technology and particularly they authored and re reviewed 67% of 1963 total commits to node.js core. And also he said, sometimes you face an impossible problem that you simply had to solve. And they talked about the design sprint and everything that went into that, um, into the COVID app that just had to be done. And they just had to build the company and grow from there. Now, I finally then had an in person conversation, well they were all in person, but I had a fireside chat then um, with Owen McCabe, founder of Intercom. And um, so I asked him all around the business and just a variety of things he said was that like, ambition is our goalposts and we need our heroes and role models. He very much encouraged everybody to get out there and to see what's out there. So that, and have good, open, honest dialogue with your co-founders. He said two things we need to obsess about. One is who we go into business with, not just who we co-found with, but also who we employ. 
And the second thing is obsess about what your customer problem is. And he said, it's not just enough to have one person who is, you know, really bought into your, into your product. You need that to have a range of different people and ask questions like, what are they replacing it with? What would they do if you took the problem away from them? Are they telling their friends about it, uh, etc.? He spoke about the changing nature of the Irish ecosystem over the past 10 years in Ireland and gave the thumbs up to a huge generation of Irish entrepreneurs.